In 2015, engineer Isa Mejano and her brother Rafael was inspired by the Butbo tribe in Kalinga who uses kerosene as their main source of lighting. The tribe would often walk for several hours just to buy kerosene in the city. So the siblings came up with the idea of using staple items found in Filipino households to create power. LED lamp, the salt, sustainable alternative lighting lamp, can run up to eight hours straight with just one glass of tap water and two tablespoons of salt, or simply ocean water. Salt water as switch. Salt water does not produce electricity necessary for the salt lamp and similar products to function. Salt water acts only as an electrolyte to facilitate the flow of electrons within the battery. When salt is added to water, the sodium and chloride ions float freely in the water. Since an ion has an electrical charge, it can carry electricity through water. If a circuit is created with an electricity source and a light bulb, it is possible to light the bulb using the salt water as a conductor. It produces 2.6 volts. Besides salt water, other products such as vinegar or even urine with enough ions to light up the product could be used. However, Mihano chose to focus on salt and water as she found out that these two were one of the main staples in Filipino households, aside from rice. Thank you everyone for listening, and these are my sources. Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about Dr. Feda Mundo and her amazing creation. Before we can get into the sciency nitty gritty about what she made, we're going to learn more about her first. Speaking of firsts, it's important to note that she was a woman of many firsts. She was the first Filipina to head a government general hospital. She was also the first Filipina to be certified by the American Board of Pediatrics as board diplomat. She was also the founder and first president of the Philippine Medical Women's Association. She's the first female president of the Philippine Pediatric Society. She's the first Filipina and first Asian elected president of the Medical Women's International Association. She's the first female president of the Philippine Medical Association. She is the first Filipina national scientist. She is also the first woman to be admitted into Harvard University in 1936. However, regardless of her numerous achievements, she stayed humble and firm in her beliefs and efforts to help those in need. Now we can start on her groundbreaking invention, the bamboo incubator. The bamboo incubator is composed of two native laundry baskets made of bamboo, bottles of hot water, and a hood for the oxygen. So, how do these components work together? The two baskets are different in size, with the smaller one being placed inside the larger basket. Then, the hot bottles of water are placed in the gaps in order to regulate the baby's temperature. Finally, there is a hood that covers the baskets with an oxygen attached. There has been no surviving original bamboo incubators, however, records show that this may be how the invention operated. Now let's dive deeper into the intention behind this invention. Dr. Del Mundo had three main reasons for both creating the incubator and inventing in general. For the incubator, she wanted to help communities in rural areas who have no access to electricity. This is why she decided to put it together with materials found in a typical household. Her second reason, focusing on inventing, was to create inexpensive inventions. By having them affordable, everyday people are able to access the same privileges that often come with a high monetary status. Finally, Dr. Feda Mundo wanted to create inventions that are easily recreated by people who have no access to medical centers. Overall, aside from the invention itself, Dr. Del Mundo teaches us to be compassionate with one another and to use our talents for the greater welfare of others. Did you know 
a Filipino scientist invented an alternative process to make the mango tree flower? As we all know, Philippines is one of the top exporters of mangoes in the world. Ilocos, Central Zone, and Western Visayas are the top three regions that are the biggest producers of mangoes. Attempting to solve the problem, Filipino mango tree growers adapted a process that uses smoke to help make the mango tree flower. Until Ramon Barba, a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Agriculture with a major in agronomy and fruit production, conducted a research using potassium nitrate and wanted to try these fertilizers on mango trees. He sprayed the potassium nitrate on selected tree branches and the rest was history. The buds began forming a week later and in two weeks, the buds already form into flowers and later on, fruit. After the development of Ramon Barba's invention, mango production in the Philippines boomed. Aside from the mango producers themselves, other business sectors such as the producers of the pest control chemicals, harvesters, sellers, and small groups of workers related to the mango industry have benefited from his invention. The technology is also applicable to other fruit trees like cashews. The invention is indeed a successful one. Today, we'll be talking about a 10 Mbit Ethernet CMOS with silicon coupler data link control and transceiver chip by Dado Banatao. Dado Banatao Dado Banatao, a fellow Tinian just like us, is a son of a rice farmer and a graduate of electrical engineering from Apua Institute of Technology, who later earned his Master of Science in Electrical Engineering and computer science at Stanford University. Just Dado Banatao, or Dado, as a technology innovator and venture capitalist in Silicon Valley, is the perfect illustration of rags to riches. But his life involved a lot of unexpected turns before he became the engineer that transformed the lives of many. The first 10 MB Ethernet CMOS with silicon coupler, data link control, and transceiver chip. The first system logic chipset for IBM's PCXT and PC80 desktop computers. The local bus concept and the first graphics accelerator chip for Windows based personal computers. These inventions are better yet technological breakthroughs, help define the personal computers which today has become an indispensable tool for work, school, and communications. Barato's principle was to simplify computer design in few chips as possible. Before his innovations, computers needed at least 150 chips to function. Thanks to him, computers can now run on a single chip. Barato's inventions were developed by the three firms he himself founded, Motion, Chips and Technologies, and S3 Graphics. The companies I led, especially S3, which allowed us to develop the graphics accelerator helped Microsoft Windows for PCs become successful, he noted. Chips and technologies in particular was later acquired by the technology giant Intel in 1997 for about 300 million US dollars. Banato will serve as a chairman of technology firms that was eventually acquired by prominent tech corporations, namely Surf Technology acquired by CSR. For all his success and accolades, Banato never forgot his humble beginnings and always keeps his feet on the ground. He says, affecting and making an impact in society means a lot to him and his family. For the poor farmer's son, the best way to pay it forward is through the advocacies 
he pushes as chairperson of Philippine Development Foundation. The Discovery of Erythromycin by Dr. Abelardo P. Aguilar Erythromycin, a well-known discovery of a Filipino, saved millions of people. Now, let's take a look at the person who pioneered this antibiotic, how it happened, and what the medicine is all about. Dr. Abelardo P. Aguilar was born on November 3, 1917. He was a Filipino physician from Iloilo. In 1949, he was testing soil samples he found at his pocket and isolated the microorganisms. Then, certain bacteria led to the discovery of the antibiotic erythromycin. Three years later, on June 28, 1952, Eli Lilico, released a memorandum announcing the results of the source of a new antibiotic. Erythromycin is an alternative antibiotic drug for patients who are allergic to penicillin. Erythromycin appears as a capsule or tablet. It is commonly used to fight infections and stopping the growth of bacteria like bronchitis, pneumonia, STD, syphilis, and others. How to use erythromycin? Take this medication by mouth as directed by your doctor, usually before a meal. This medication is best absorbed when taken on an empty stomach. Since the breakthrough of Dr. Aguilar's discovery until his deathbed, he was never paid nor included. His only dream was to get the money he was promised to continue his good deed of building public health care accessible to all his countrymen. Hello everyone! Now, we will talk about another creative invention from one of our finest Filipino innovators. I present to you, Quink by Francisco Kisumbing. So Francisco Kisumbing is a Filipino chemist known for being the inventor of Quink Ink used by the Parker Pen Company. He graduated from the University of Chicago under the American Pensionado Program. He went back to the Philippines after World War II but was unable to organize the Philippine Ink Corporation under the Japanese Reparations Program because of too much government intervention. So now, let us talk about Quink. Quink is a fountain pen ink developed by the Parker Pen Company. The resulting product was strongly alkaline and contained isopropyl alcohol, a solvent not previously used in inks. The Quink bottles were designed with a low center of gravity to prevent tipping. The ink was to have several improvements over the years. An even quicker drying product appeared in 1939 called Double Quink. It included a further refinement in the addition of the chemical Sol V-X, which dissolved sediment and cleaned the pen when writing. So Quink was manufactured in four colors, namely India Black, Pan American Green, China Red, and the famous Tunis Blue. So aside from what I have mentioned, Quink also has its unique features, such as the following. It resisted water, it did not fade, it did not clog, it resisted molding, it was non-corrosive, it was quick drying, and last but not the least, it had the desired quality of ink flow. How cool is that? So before I end this report, I want to give you a quick trivia. Why do you think it was called Quink? Okay, so Quink was claimed to stand for Kisumbing Ink, but there is no reliable evidence to support this. However, Parker state instead that the name is a combination of quick and ink. But which one sounds better? Comment down below! So that's all for today. Thank you for listening and have a great day!